A wonderful good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back at the Technical Forum here at the group exhibit Hydrogen, Fuel Cells and Batteries. We're here at the Hanover Fairground in the year of 2016. Our partner country this year are the United States. My name is Mona, I'm the moderator, and I'll be introducing to you the next topic, which is high dynamic metal hydrates for advanced fuel cell technology. And for that, we'll hear Head of Department Hydrogen Technology of the Fraunhofer Institute uh, IFAM. So please welcome with me on stage our next speaker, Dr. Lars Rönsch. Big hands, please. Good afternoon. Yeah, thank you, Mona, for this very kind introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'd like to talk about um, the use and the application of metal hydrides as hydrogen storage technology for advanced fuel cells. So um, I'm still waiting for the opening slide. No? It's the wrong presentation. <laughs> Sorry. Hmm. Here we go. Yeah, uh, before I start with the topic of uh, metal hydrides, I'd like to first uh, present the topics uh, that we are dealing with at Fraunhofer IFAM. Besides uh, solid state storage and metal hydrides, we also work on electrolysis, where we test and develop electrode materials for electrolysis. We also work on hydrogen demand solutions um, based on hydrolysis reactions, and we do a little work on also rare earth uh, metal recycling. Um, well, metal hydrides, um, as you know, are chemical compounds between metal alloys and hydrogen. Uh, literally speaking, some metals are uh, capable to soak up hydrogen like a sponge. Hydrogen will diffuse into the metal and will locate the interstitial lattice sites in the metal, and thereby we get a very, very high volumetric storage density that is comparable to liquid hydrogen. However, these chemical reactions are uh, taking place at room temperature. Um, this is one of the crucial advantages, the high gravimetric and volumetric storage capacity. Then we have um, very low operation pressures for these metal hydride uh, reactions, only moderate pressures between some bars and some 10 bars are required. So in terms of system safety, metal hydride based hydrogen storage devices can be much more robust. Um, they are used, uh, metal hydrides, not only for storing hydrogen, but also for other technical purposes, like hydrogen gathering and vacuum uh, devices. We have uh, hydrogen generation uh, via hydrolysis reactions, and also thermochemically, uh, metal hydrides are being used as heat source and heat sink because the chemical reaction is related to a reaction of heat. And then there are other more exotic ap applications like uh, compression of hydrogen using metal hydrides, also separation of hydrogen from certain gas mixtures. And maybe you all know metal hydrides are also used, of course, in battery technologies for nickel metal hydride batteries. Just to give you an overview, some examples of applications are submarines where metal hydrides are already used today on a commercial scale, heavy-duty vehicles, and uh, also in um, automotive applications, one can think of using metal hydrides for thermochemical applications or as hydrogen buffer elements. When we look at this slide, I have compared uh, some physical parameters of different hydrogen storage technologies, and you see in the orange uh, fields the volumetric capacity of the cl to classics 
form of hydrogen storage liquefied in compressed gas at 700 bars. And uh, below that, we have the hydrogen uh, storage capacity in metal hydrides. And you see, we get usually more than 100 gram hydrogen per liter of volume, which is a very high amount. Well, um, applications where metal hydrides are already used are uh, shown on this slide. And one of the crucial things about metal hydrides is not only capacity and kinetics of the reaction, but also thermal management and heat transfer, because um, very often these are the bottlenecks in terms of uh, technical use of metal hydrides. So very often type bundle reactors are used where a hydride is located in the center of a pressure pipe and surrounding you have uh, a heat transfer fluid or a gas uh, flow where uh, heat is being delivered uh, into the hydride to set up uh, the hydrogen flow or during the hydrogen, hydrogenation we will have the uh, exhaust heat that is being produced um, uh, delivered uh, away. Um, we have some um, also companies here on the Hannover Fair that present metal hydride technology. One important aspect as I said is uh, the capacity kinetics, but also the heat transfer into the reaction zone, which is of crucial importance. And the title of my presentation is High Dynamic Metal Hydrides, and I explain to you how we get a high dynamic metal hydride storage technology done. Usually one would start, and all this technology is available at Fraunhofer IFAM for, uh, IFAM for development purposes. We start from the raw metals, from the raw materials, by melting base processes, the precise chemical stoichiometry um, is uh, being set into reality in form of granules or bars uh, of metal alloy. And then one would produce uh, powders or small flakes uh, from this um, uh, master alloys. And um, you could already uh, at this stage use uh, the powder to hydrogenate it, forming a hydride, but then you have a very low heat transfer. You can imagine isolated metal particles have only a very few contact points and heat transfer is very low. We speak about heat transfer coefficients of one watt per meter in Kelvin and less, which is not enough for high dynamic um, use of metal hydrides. Therefore, usually uh, secondary phases are added to the hydrogen uh, um, storage material, um, materials like graphite or aluminum that have intrinsically a very high heat conductivity are added to the hydride forming powder. A mixture is being created and then in an uniaxial compaction one would end up with this uh, pellet-like forms, a cylinder usually is used and these pellets uh, then are introduced into um, the pressure vessel where the hydrogen storage takes place. And the numbers uh, on the right hand side explain to you uh, that we can reach much higher heat conductivity and we of course uh, decrease by the compaction step the porosity of the storage bed. This is how it looks like in a pre-industrial scale. So you have different powders, you mix it and then you compact these uh, tablet forms. Um, one example uh, how dynamic such a high hydrogen storage material, we uh, name it metal hydride composite can get, is uh, drawn on this graph. Um, we have these uh, four centimeter uh, pellets. They consist of a titanium manganese alloy in this case. You put it into a hydrogen atmosphere of some bars and uh, after 300 seconds already the whole material has been reacted and the metal hydride has been formed and the reaction is over. Um, the same applies to the dehydrogenation of the material. So one can really get into the time frame of um, also high pressure vessels where also three to five minutes are state of the art. This is, being, uh, is possible also with solid state storage materials like hydrides. We have much lower operation pressure and we have uh, even higher volumetric storage density. Um, you can even increase the dynamics to very few uh, uh, seconds, in this case, about 90 seconds are enough to fully hydrogenate uh, such a metal hydride composite and you can do it over many, many cycles. In this case, it's a collaboration with our colleagues from the DLR in Stuttgart. We have shown that over a thousand cycles, the material is practically stable and you can imagine that you uh, have a technical readiness level uh, reach for this high dynamic uh, metal hydride storage device. Um, speaking about devices, um, it's always a good idea to have a modular approach. That means to think about very basic and simple uh, models, uh, um, uh, modules, I'm sorry, a, a pressure pipe basically where these tablets um, are filled in. 
in the center there's usually a small opening to deliver the gaseous hydrogen and the uh, transfer uh, of the reaction heat is uh, being done via the walls of the vessel. And uh, then you would, by multiplying the number of tubes, you would in a pipe bundle design scale up the capacity of the storage device and depending on whether you operate uh, the, um, uh, the pipes in a parallel or a serial manner, you can more or less play with capacity and hydrogen flow that is being taken up by the uh, storage device or delivered by the device. Um, well, we have done many prototypes for our customers. Here's a selection. Uh, one example is also shown on our booth at uh, B4T here in this hall, um, where we use ex explicitly the pipe bundle design in a 19-inch um, um, geometry. Also, this is a collaboration with DLR in Stuttgart. Uh, the idea is to deliver for backup power uh, supply uh, fuel cells in the standard 19-inch format, uh, as you see on the right-hand side. And in the same format, we would apply the hydrogen storage based on hydrides. This can be, be placed inside uh, buildings because of the low operation pressure um, and the related high safety. This is possible. Also mobile applications, we have done already here one example from a few cell Petalik, collaboration with the colleagues from Fraunhofer ISE in Freiburg, uh, where the uh, fuel cell um, is being used uh, in connection with the hydride. Uh, here the exhaust heat of the fuel cell is being used to trigger the hydrogen release from this uh, uh, hydride device. And it uh, operates quite nicely, so we have shown a 200 kilometer cruising range with a one tank filling. Um, a crucial uh, problem with metal hydrides so far was uh, the degree of filling of um, the pressure vessel because usually one takes only the pressure inside uh, such devices which gives you a very unprecise um, result. We have developed recently a sensor that uh, relies on measuring a force inside the reaction zone and thereby we can get a linear relationship between the degree of filling and uh, the force we measure and thereby we can vary dynamically and precisely determine the degree of filling um, and thereby uh, we have more reliability um, of the use of the system. So, um, also of course important is always the question of recycling of materials when we have reached the end of uh, the life cycle. Um, one has to think about recycling these materials and uh, hydride composites are much more trickier than uh, raw metal hydrides. You have here composite between different types of materials. Um, we use hydrometallurgical separation, for example, and you can get to a secondary use material that from the first trial reaches 80% of the original capacity, basically the same kinetics, and the, slides, uh, the slide proves that it's really possible to recycle the mate material and um, to uh, thereby also save uh, the environment. Yeah, in our lab at Fraunhofer, we are able to fully uh, characterize and determine the materials parameters when we develop new hydride materials and we can also make system tests. We have a special test rig developed where we can do cycle tests, um, degradation tests of these materials, all uh, that is uh, necessary for uh, uh, product development at the end. On the final slide, um, I have listed uh, the services that we are offering to our customers. Um, industrial customers, but also to our project partners. And uh, I would welcome any further uh, contact with you um, on uh, metal hydride technology development. And with this, I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Are there any questions from the audience at this time? Okay, then all questions can be taken with you because we have to start with the next presentation. We all thank you for this very interesting talk. Once again, big hands, please. Thank you.